The next one, he conquered death. And he gives life. We could say eternal death and, and eternal life because that's really what he's, he's talking about here. All of us are going to live eternally. We're, we're eternal beings. And it's either eternal life or eternal death. It's either eternal celebration with God or eternal separation from God. There's no other choices. Those are the two choices you have. And, and so he conquered eternal death so that he could give us eternal life. John eleven twenty five 25 through 26, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet he shall live. That sounds odd. He's going to die and yet he's going to live. What does that mean? Well, physically we're going to all die, but death for a believer is just like falling asleep because that's what he says. He talks about Lazarus. Oh, he's just asleep right now. So how many like taking Sunday afternoon naps? Those are a lot of fun. He's saying that's what death is for us as a believer. We just kind of fall asleep. Then we wake up in the arms of our Savior. Whoever believes in me, though he die, he shall live, yet he shall live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? So here's the promise. We have no fear of eternal death. In fact, the moment you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you go from eternal death to eternal life. Because through the crucifixion, he's conquered eternal death. Through the resurrection, he gives us eternal life. Another interesting story here. George Wilson was sentenced to hang after he was convicted of killing a guard while robbing a federal payroll from a train. This happened back in 1833. Public sentiment against capital punishment led to an eventual pardon by President Andrew Jackson. Unbelievably, Wilson refused to accept the pardon. Can you do that? The case became so confusing that the Supreme Court was called on to bring about a ruling. Chief Justice John Marshall delivered the verdict, and I quote, a pardon is a parchment whose only value must be determined by the receiver of the pardon. It has no value apart from that which the receiver gives it. George Wilson has refused to accept the pardon. We cannot conceive why he would do so, but he has, therefore George Wilson must die, end of quote. Consequently, Wilson was hanged. God's grace becomes a pardon from sin only to those who receive it. I would say the same thing about those of you that refuse the pardon that comes to us through the Lord Jesus Christ. That is folly of infinite and eternal ramifications. 